Right off the bat, one of the first mechanics we're going to see is her spawn a little blood boil. This ability is cast pretty frequently throughout the fight. Uh, it's just an ad you have to kill before it explodes. You got about 10 seconds before it explodes, and if it does, you probably die. One important thing to note about this is this also has a debuff mechanic, which is sort of a soft enrage. Down here in the bottom, you see this stacking debuff. The longer you're in the fight, the longer or the more this will stack up. And what this does is increases the damage of the spawning mechanic of this little blood boil. It doesn't increase the damage of anything else, it's just a little blood boil spawn. Eventually, if you're in this fight for you know 10, 15 minutes, it'll one-shot you. Most classes, you know, except for Sork, don't have to worry about that, just something to consider. Whenever it spawns, kill it. She has a few filler abilities that don't matter too much, like her little frontal cleaves. She'll spawn these little like dart things to apply vulnerable. I'm not going to talk about those too much because they're just kind of filler, uh, like this as well, just not too impactful. Just try not to stand in it. It probably won't kill you if you do. Spawns these adds very frequently, these volatile bloods. It's really important to have a character that can kill them effectively. And she's probably going to use a wave ability here soon. The phase one main mechanic of these waves. So. The general idea for every single wave pattern is the same. We're going to, like as soon as she jumps up into the sky, we're going to walk somewhere on the edge of the arena. I prefer the bottom side because due to the camera angles in this game, it's you can see further up than down, so we go to the bottom of the arena. And then as soon as this first wave spawns, this is what we do for all wave patterns. We just run to the other side of the arena as soon as possible. And while we're running to the other side of the arena, we want to look at what the wave pattern is to make sure that you know, we're going to be safe. In phase one, this jumping wave, it's always the same pattern. You just run straight down the middle, get behind the second middle wave, and you're safe. And you'll always repeat that, and it always works for this phase one wave. The second wave ability she has in phase one is like a, a wide frontal wave where she doesn't go in vuln. I killed her too fast here, so she, she didn't do it. For that one, typically you just run through her. It's not too hard. Uh, phase one, intermission. She's going to be spamming waves nonstop the entire time with these adds up. What the adds do is they punch you for small damage and they have a, like a, a hook ability where they'll pull you to them. Try not to get pulled through waves. It's pretty rare that it can happen, but something to look out for. It's happened to me once so far in all my pulls. The general idea for waves is the same thing. We're gonna go to the edge of the arena and then immediately dodge up through the middle and the side waves go past us. Whenever you kill an add to blood boil spawn, you have about 10 seconds to kill the blood boils. So it's important to kill the adds Ideally, right when a wave is spawning, and then you just dodge wave, go back, kill the bub boils, rinse and repeat forever, and that is usually reliable. One thing you need to look out for, this is a pretty common bug in this part of the fight. It's only in this part of the fight as far as I know. I have a video here. Sometimes the side waves will overlap with the middle wave. They're supposed to spawn a fixed distance apart. Occasionally during this phase of intermission, they won't, and this can happen. It's just something you have to look out for. Like right here you'll see that the gap in the middle here is almost non-existent. It is so, so small. Sometimes it'll be close enough that there actually is no gap and you just lose if you're doing the default wave dodging strategy. One thing you can try to do if you notice this is happening before you die is just flee to like a clean side of the arena instead of dodging in the middle. But you're probably just going to lose pulse for this every now and then. It happens. It is what it is. Just wanted to make a quick note of that. As soon as you kill the uh, first set of adds, the fight continues pretty much the same as the first 30%. She'll do the same wave patterns, we dodge the same way, we go to the edge of the arena, we run down the middle. Once she gets below 50%, there's going to be one new mechanic. Or kind of a new mechanic, it's an amplified mechanic of the, this little like blood boil spawning ability, which she'll use the entire fight. Once she's below 50%, she'll spawn two instead of one. This is the wide wave I talked about at the start of the video. As you can see, it's pretty simple to dodge. She spawns a wide wave, you just run through it. If she's on the very edge of the arena and you can't run through it, you just kind of run away and then go around it. It's, it's one of the easier waves to dodge. This, so this is new after phase one intermission. Sometimes the waves can go backwards instead of all in one direction, but it doesn't really matter. I'm actually not even sure if that's new after the phase one intermission. It might be possible always. But the way you dodge is the exact same. You just run down the middle and then ignore the side waves. Here we're starting phase two intermission. We have a different set of adds. Um, in, in the phase one, one intermission, the adds have that little like grip ability, which can kill you. As far as I know, these adds don't do anything. Uh, there's just three of them instead of two. They each spawn two blood boils when they die, so it's important to kill them at an ideal time. 
but there's one new wave mechanic, one new pattern that can appear once you're in this phase. Instead of the boss going up in the air and just spawning um, like some waves, she'll slam the ground and spawn waves around the slam. There's two different patterns. The first one we're going to see here is a triangle pattern. So you have a slam, which is centered somewhere around your character. It's not directly on you, it's just kind of near you. It's very important to be on the edge of the arena so that you see the entire top of the arena is clean. As long as you always bait on the edge, you can just like flee to the other side and you're usually good. This is the triangle pattern. These waves always go clockwise. So this one will go right, the one over here on the right will go down, and the one at the bottom will come up to the left. This is a very easy one to dodge. We just go straight north and then we're clean. As soon as we do, we hit the ads a bit, go back to the edge. It's very, very important. You always get back to the edge before a new wave pattern spawns. And this one is the alternative uh, tr slam pattern. So instead of a triangle spawning, we have three lines where the middle line is going in a different direction than the side ones. We dodge this the same way. You go to the edge, you immediately, as soon as you see the circle, you go up. And while you're moving up, you want to identify where the waves are coming from. So you can either have this pattern where it's the side waves going down in the middle and the middle one coming up, or you can have the reverse pattern where the middle wave is going down and the side waves are coming up. So as soon as, like, in, instantly you just go up and then determine if you're safe in the middle, or if you're safe on the right. Here I'm safe in the middle, so we just go up to the middle and then go behind the right wave. And then go back to hitting the ads and you just rinse repeat. You can do any of these wave patterns. Here we have a triangle again, the same idea, bait on the edge, get to the other side. And now this is back to a normal phase one dodging pattern once uh, you kill those ads. And she can also still do the slam waves as well. Just blow half, so we're getting two blood boils per thing now. Here's a triangle. It's very, very consistent with how you dodge these waves. No matter what, bait on the edge, cross the arena. Bait on the edge, cross the arena. And there's not really anything new for the remainder of this phase. You can see my debuff here at the bottom is stacking up, but uh, like, unless you're spending a massive amount of time, it's not really something too important to worry about. We're just going to be starting phase two here, and you'll notice I make one gear swap as we enter phase two. I'm changing one of my one-handers to Butcher's Cleaver, and the reason for this is because it applies a lot of CC, which causes you to stagger the boss. And staggering the boss in phase two is important because it gets rid of some degen puddles on the ground, which I'll explain momentarily. Down this game, so sorry. right at the start, you'll notice I stand on the left side of the boss here. I'm not entirely certain if this is real or just tinfoil, but I just did it because it felt like it was. The first ability the boss is going to do is she's going to spawn four blood puddles, which we'll see right here. These blood puddles will spawn from these little circles that she spawns, and it kind of feels like, based on where you're standing around her, it'll determine their spawn location, and it's ideal if two of them are in the north quadrant, because they'll be deleted when she deletes this quadrant, which will happen later in the fight. I actually staggered her super early here, just because of good CC procs, and you'll see, whenever you stagger the boss, one to two blood puddles will be deleted, which is massive for keeping the arena clean, because later on, these blood puddles will spawn fireballs that typically one-shot you. So having as few as possible is ideal, and you have some agency in how they spawn, Fast which I'll explain stagger. here at the end of the stagger. So one of her most common abilities she uses, it's kind of similar to the blood, um, like little puddles spawn in phase one that spawns the ad you have to kill, but in phase two it's different. There's no ad you have to kill, it just spawns one of these uh, ground effects, these degens that spawn fireballs, but she also destroys them. So any puddle that is inside of this circle will be destroyed, and then she'll create a new puddle in the circle. So if you always bait the circle onto a pre-existing puddle, it will destroy the old one and then make a new one, so you have the same amount at the end. If you have puddles that are very stacked, you can occasionally remove multiples with one circle, but the spawn location of the circle is not precise on you, it's just near you. As you can see here, I baited very poorly and got lucky that it just happened to hit this one. That was just, you know, sheer luck. Still have two puddles. In phase two, she does this move all the time, which is very fun as melee, you kind of just run out. One thing to note, when I first started with this fight that wasn't very clear to me, I thought this, like, tar ground would do damage to you. But the tar ground doesn't actually do damage to you, it's when she ignites it that does damage. So I can safely stand on this until she turns it red, which is important later on. It's not important now because of the spell queuing, but typically you'll be baiting one of these puddles 
during the target round. And the goal is to, so typically in a normal spell queuing scenario, while the target round is here, we're going to stand on this puddle for as long as possible, and she's going to spawn the puddle before she ignites the ground. That way we'll destroy the old puddle, spawn a new puddle, and then dodge to the burning ground. That doesn't happen here, but you'll see it happen a lot later on. And now here's the next mechanic of the fight. So look at the boss's uh, model. She's going to like kind of scream. There's going to be a little wave that expands from her. It's just a visual and it pushes you back. And she's going to look really mad. And she is really mad. And then she's going to try to kill you by spawning a clone that uses this like little like triangular frontal attack. And she'll also use it as well. These typically one-shot you. If you don't have like challenging shout on like a very beefy barb, they one-shot you. The way you avoid it is by running away and then in a circle. So that, that's the mad animation. So now we flee and run in a circle. At the end of... The uh, slam sequence, she'll do a big circle slam. Like clones, like as soon as that's over, on. she's typically going to spawn a new blood puddle. I placed it poorly, but basically after every major ability, she's probably going to spawn a blood puddle. So it's important to, like right now, like my positioning is, it, it only worked out here because it happened to be the platform phase. It's kind of hard to tell if she's going to be doing a platform break or if it's a normal uh, DJ ground. because There's no notches on her health bar to like to differentiate it. So if she did do a blood puddle here, I would have spawned it poorly, but... It, it, it was the platform break, so it didn't matter. And for the platform break, generally the idea is the same for all of them. You want to stay in the tar ground for as long as possible. And then you enter the platform only when you absolutely have to do a circle around the edge of the platform and then re-enter the main platform before the platform falls off on the opposite side. And the circle helps you avoid the fireballs from all of these blood puddles. So we're just going to go up here to a circle. I press challenging shout so I don't get one shot by fireballs. We continue the circle. At the end of every platform break, her next ability is always the same. She's going to do what I refer to as the suck slam, where she sucks you in with like a whirlwind, which like kind of stuns your character temporarily, and then she slams the ground. This is very dangerous because often there's fireballs that are coming through the boss when she does this, and you'll get pulled into them and die. On Barb, I pre rally and cry to get unstoppable beforehand. Based on your class, you'll have different tools to handle this. But you'll see here, I rally and cry to avoid this pull-in, and then we dodge, and then she's going to spawn a blood puddle. And this sequence will repeat for the next like 10 minutes or so. Whenever she does the suck slam, she'll spawn these little adds, which for the first 50% of the fight are not um, that important. You just kind of kill them, and they give a lot of life bot charges. You'll see I, I staggered her again, which removed more blood puddles. It's very important to stagger the boss as much as possible to keep the arena clean. And as melee, your optimum is very bad. Because there's just like constant mechanics that are happening non-stop that force you to leave the boss's uh, uh, me melee range. So the fight's very long for that reason. Here, I did my best to bait it on this old blood puddle, but the timing wasn't ideal, so it didn't work out too well. You get to mad again, we run away, we run in a circle. This mechanic in phase two, this debuff, is the same as in phase one. Whenever she spawns blood puddles, you take damage. And you have a ramping debuff where you're taking more and more damage as the fight goes on. And she just constantly just goes up, and then she gets mad, and then she goes up, and then she gets mad. So see, I try to bait the blood pedal here on the right. And now she's probably going to get mad. Let me run away. And this this is, it will just repeat nonstop. Very, very low uptime. So it's going to be a long fight. For my character, at least. As soon as she does a mechanic, we bait the, bait the blood pedals. It's... Like, tar ground, blood puddle. She gets mad, blood puddle. And then occasionally she'll do, do the uh, the suck slam during it, but that ability is not as rare, or not as common. One thing to note is if you stagger her right after she gets mad, the clone is still active and can kill you. As we're approaching sub 50%, some mechanics change. Mainly, when she does the get mad ability and the um, like tar ground ability, once she's below 50%, all of the active puddles will spawn fireballs during those mechanics. This is when the fight gets much harder. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to that because otherwise we'll be here forever. We're about to get to 50%, I think. Close. She's going to break another platform soon. Here I'm just trying to bait the blood puddle. I, I got a little unlucky there and it didn't destroy the old one. It happens sometimes, not much you can do about it, except be a little more centralized in the blood puddle. Here, I think we're not quite going to break the platform yet. The next target round, I'm pretty sure is a platform break. 
and then the arena will get smaller. Yeah, so here we go. I decided to enter the platform from the right side instead of the left side. The reason for that is because when you're exiting the platform, it's ideal if you're as far from the blood puddles as possible. If you were coming from the left and moving to the right, you'd be like kind of cramped against this wall, which can like limit your ability to dodge on the fly. So I stay in the tar ground for as long as possible, baiting the firewalls to come down. We enter the platform that's breaking, use challenging shout, we'll leave on the top side and continue this little like circle ability. He's going to do the suck slam, so we're going to pre rally and cry so we don't get pulled in. And now that she's below 50% and she's about to be, these adds and the blood puddles are going to spawn fireballs anytime she does the get mad ability or the tar ground. So you, now you see these fireballs are here, which just makes the dodging even harder. Instead of only having to do this little movement on the platform breaks, you have to do it every single time she does this DJ mechanic now. Which just means the adds are much more important to kill. But they're pretty squishy, they, they kind of just fall over. We're just gonna skip through because this is like this was like a 15 minute fight it's it's very slow and it's just repeating the same mechanics over and over from this point forever in this phase where he does the tar ground he dodges the fireballs she does the get mad he dodges the fireballs one thing that's important is the platform gets smaller you really want to make sure you're walking on the edge like this you see how like as i'm dodging in a circle i dodge along the edge so that when the circle slam at the very end of the get mad ability happens It'll be on an edge and we can more easily dodge it. It's very helpful in this fight. Use boots with plus four evade charges. This makes it a lot easier to dodge both the waves in phase one and that uh, like circle slam at the end of her enrage in phase two. So here we're just having the same thing. We dodge fireballs. We get out of the tar ground before she puts it on fire. And we're gonna be entering the last phase here soon. In the last phase, things get substantially harder. As you'll notice, my character can tank one fireball with Challenging Shout. A lot of characters can't do that, which makes the fight a lot harder if your class has no ways to tank them. Barb can take it with Challenging Shout, uh, Sorks and Necros can invuln it. Alright, we should be phasing real soon. My Blood Puddle spawning has gotten pretty bad over the course of the fight, and there's more puddles than there should be. Makes my life harder. This is the last platform break, so we're doing the same thing. We try to enter as late as possible. I kind of messed up here. I entered the platform too early relative to when she was going to break it, which meant I had to backtrack or I would have walked into the uh, the burning ground. Whenever you backtrack, you're going to eat a fireball pretty much always. My character can tank one, so it's usually fine, but really you just need to, to move better. Now this is the enrage mechanic on the last platform. The difference is you have no space and the clone and the boss Actually, I think it's just the clone will attack more times. So before the last phase, the clone attacks like three or four times. In the last phase, it attacks six times. So that just means you have to move in that same circular pattern for longer. And this is another big difference in the last phase. In the first three phases, when she spawns the tar ground, she just spawns one wave of tar ground and then she burns it and that's it. In last phase, when she does this mechanic, she'll do it twice. If she's coming top to bottom left, we're going to have a very tiny, tiny sliver. Of, of safe spot and she's immediately already going to the right so we have to come over here to the right and we have practically no space there's fireballs everywhere it's hectic my character thankfully is tanky enough to eat them if you can't tank these this is extraordinarily difficult that's like rogues and druids mainly i think to have that problem and once again we're trying to put the um the circle slam as far to the edge as possible but with this little space it's a massive pain that's why my character is heavily invested in execute damage so this space is short i eat a fireball here which procs my two death potion but the boss is like 1 HP, and I have Challenging Shout, so I decided that I would just kill her, because it's 1 hit. And it all worked out in the end. Let's barely. Let's go. Hope that's helpful. It's pretty rambly. That was my first take. I'm not doing another one. Enjoy.